I'm John Darren with the Cokie Valley Sword Group, and today we are going to be talking about speed. Uh, we've talked a little bit about this in the past, but uh, from the numbers of emails that I'm, I'm getting about it, it's uh, clear that uh, you guys are still missing a few points. So, uh, our plan is to go over what speed is, what it isn't, and uh, what it is in Kyoho, and how that relates to our strategy and uh, physicality in general. So this is going to be a long video, um, strap in, get some popcorn, and uh, we'll dive right in. So what is speed? Speed, as uh, most of us perceive it, goes something like this, right? We see two fighters, and uh, fighter number one, he's swinging at the dude, pat, pat, pat. Fighter number two, maybe hitting him two or three times that, pat, 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 pat. And we think, wow, you know, fighter number two is really, really fast. And it seems to us that if uh, fighter number two wins, then the reason why he won is the reason that we can most clearly distinguish, the reason that we can most clearly see, which is his speed, right? So it's an understandable assumption. The problem is, that uh, we, our, our understanding of what speed is, is uh, juvenile, it's rudimentary, right? We haven't really uh, sort of gotten into what it is. Because the truth is that speed is, uh, it's relative, right? If we take those same fighter A and fighter B, now fighter B is fighting fighter number C, and fighter number C is hitting him, pop, 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 for every pop. Right? Now we say, oh, fighter C won because he was fast. Fighter B lost because he was slow. Fighter B is moving at the same speed, right? So what changed? Is it that uh, speed is king? And the old saying that it's not the strong that eat the weak, but the fast that eat the slow really holds out? Or uh, is, is there something else going on here? Now, when most people talk about uh, speed and trying to get faster, what they're talking about is trying to increase their physicality, right? Trying to build their muscles, build their tendons, to increase their body's overall strength so that they can drive their weapon faster, so they can push their tool faster the, to the opponent. Now, uh, Musashi makes no bones about this. He says clearly, if you're trying to push your cut, your cut's going to be coarse, it's going to be shallow, it's going to be weak comparatively. Now, um, why does this matter, right? In our modern context, when we participate in any kind of uh, event where we'd actually use our skill, uh, it's, it's during competition, right? It's during sort of uh, Gekikan, or friendly matches between schools, friendly matches between individuals, or uh, in some type of other competitive arena like uh, Kindo or whatever. And so, in those situations, for one, we're not actually cutting the opponent. So whether or not the, whether or not the cut itself is coarse is inconsequential. And because it's inconsequential, we tend to go, well, if it's of no consequence, it's of no value, whether or not it's, it's coarse doesn't matter. In these events, we're also working one against one, right? So if I'm, I'm squared off against Techie and I, and I just tap him, right? Even a, a vigorous tap. Nothing about my, my posture or my body or, or how I'm under control really matters so much. I mean, some competitions have rules regarding this, but uh, they generally don't do a lot to actually enforce any kind of traditional form, which is fine because they're, they're a competitive martial sporting event and, you know, you have to make uh, compromises for lots of reasons. Now, when we're in these competitions, we also aren't worried about armor, right? We don't worry about, well, what happens 
if uh, Techie, if the bad guy, knows that armor is not just something that you wear and it's just kind of like passively there, but it is an active tool that you engage the opponent with, right? That you use uh, in the same way maybe Western fighters would use a shield or a buckler, right? And so they don't realize the value that uh, cutting a person well means so much more than just being able to do physical damage to them. It means to be able to disrupt their form, to disrupt their ability to strike you uh, in return, in the afterblow, right? And so it's very common for people to feel that if they get strong, they're going to win. And if what your goal is, is uh, competitive fighting, uh, then maybe that'll work for you. It works for lots of people. But in Hyoho, our goal is different. Our goal is archaic, right? It's, it's, it is by its very nature outdated, right? We're 2020, nobody is fighting anybody in armor with swords to the death, right? Nobody is using live blades to cut each other down in a battlefield. Nobody's settling social disputes with swords. It just doesn't happen. But uh, we still keep that mindset for lots of reasons, right? Uh, because Hyoho, a strategy, Koryu in general, it gets its uh, meaning. It gets its value from its authenticity, from its uh, earnestness, in that, yes, this is the purpose of this thing. It's, we're, not, we're not out here swinging swords to find enlightenment. We're not swinging swords so we get into to good physical shape. We're not swinging swords to, to wipe away the stress of our days or some sort of moving meditation. We are swinging swords to learn how to murder people the same way our ancestors murdered people, right? And um, because that's an uncomfortable thought, many people try and sort of whitewash it and um, turn it into something it's not. And in doing so, change the parameters of what is useful and what is good. So um, it's important to train uh, towards your goal, right? So it's a little bit of a <laughs> big old sidetrack. Um, why does cutting with strength make you coarse, right? It is pretty simple, right? When we're engaging our muscles, the muscles expand. As those muscles expand, they contract on the bone, they contract on the tendons, and they basically act as a mild brake pad for your motion. In addition, when they're contracted, they become more uh, solid, right? And that solidness uh, is infectious. It spreads to the rest of your body. So while we could swing our tool uh, in isolation if we're reasonably relaxed. When we start to apply a lot of muscle, it begins to contort and distort our form, right? Why does this matter? It matters because it changes what's available to your opponent. Right? It changes what's close to them. It changes uh, an integral part of your ma'ai. Right? It's distance, timing, and relationship. How you and your opponent are oriented to one another. How your tools are oriented to one another. And when you cut coarsely, uh, you leave yourself very vulnerable. Um, now, if you live in a magical world where you are always better than your opponent and every single one of your cuts will drop them deader than a doornail, then you probably don't have to worry, right? But uh, for the rest of us mere mortals, uh, there's always gonna be someone better than us. And 
obviously our luck is uh, so bad that we're in a sword fight in 2020, uh, chances are, are pretty good that they're going to be better than us. So can we really afford to start throwing away fundamentals for the sake of what? Getting there first, right? I think by the uh, end of this ridiculously long video, you'll you'll start to appreciate that uh, you don't have to do those things to win. And in fact, uh, there are many, many times that it is desirable uh, to not go fast, to be quiet, to dwell, to to wait, right? So. Now that we, we've kind of talked about the, the common idea of speed, let's uh, move to the next section. Let's talk about speed in Kyoho, uh, what it is, and how it relates to physicality. Um, in fact, let's start with physicality. Uh, a number of emails I've gotten uh, especially once we've started doing the Nito Seho, uh, revolve around the idea, or the, 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 the writers are expressing that they don't feel that they can move fast enough when they start using two swords, right? They pick up their swords, and they, they make their swings, but they're, they're just slow, right? They, they can't uh, get them there in good time. In this case, uh, physicality is definitely an issue, right? But I just said that we don't want to use our physical strength to drive for speed, and that's true. But we have to have the physical capacity to use our tools comfortably, right? What does that mean? And Masashi puts it simply, says, okay, you got your sword, Right? You should be able to use the sword that you have in every day comfortably with two fingers, right? What two fingers is he talking about? Those two fingers, your littlest fingers. You should be able to swing your sword comfortably, right? There should not be a a sense of panic, of loss of control, of trying to catch up to the tool with your body, right? You should be able to move it with ease and comfort, right? Because after all, all the other fingers are just there to help stabilize the tool and make you feel comfortable, right? So, does this mean that, like, okay, well, I, I read what Musashi wrote, saw the video, go pick up my sword, and I totally can't do that, right? Can't do it with my bokeh even, right? So I should go out and get a lighter sword, a lighter bokeh, right? No, of course not. <laughs> Again, this is something that Musashi makes pretty clear. Your sword should be sturdy. It should be sturdy enough to do the job, get the job done. Now... Your boken is the tool that you do the majority of your training with, especially in, in Kyoho. And uh, there's a reason that the boken that people start off with in, in Kyoho are thin. They're thin and they're short, right? One of those reasons is because for most people, the ligaments and tendons in their joints are uh, not very well developed, right? They're weak. And if the average person picks up a, a, a well-weighted bokeh, something that comes even remotely close to the weight of a sword, uh, or uses a, a shinken, a light blade, they're going to injure themselves, right? They're going to injure their joints, and they're going to have a real hard time right? And needlessly suffer. So, we start them off with lighter, thinner, smaller bokeh. Now, it's assumed 
that as they progress, as they build the requisite strength in their joints, they'll increase the weight of their bouquet, right? And they will use tools that uh, more closely approximate the weight of their sword, right? Um, to be clear, becoming strong enough that you can use your sword comfortably is not the same thing as increasing your strength so that you can move fast and relying on strength to move fast. These are, these are very, very different and the mindset behind them and the results they produce are different. So it's worth taking some time to kind of uh, ruminate on it, right? Think about it, explore the motion. And again, don't trust me. Don't trust any sensei. Don't trust the shiniest, stripiest black belt you know. Don't trust anybody. Listen to what they have to say and test it, right? Test it yourself. Swing your sword as fast as you can. It doesn't corrupt your posture, right? Work until you can move your sword comfortably, right? At speed with two fingers, right? See the difference for yourself so you can have faith in your own work, not uh, some great guru, right? Now, that is pretty much the extent of physicality in terms of, of speed that we work with in Yoho. Um, now, that being said, when we do our work, especially when we're doing it at time, it's fast, right? It appears very fast. And especially to your opponent, you seem to be working at a much, much higher speed than they are. Uh, this is mostly an illusion. It is, it is an optical illusion uh, created by a failure in the way people perceive objects in motion. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and stop here and make another section. So let's break down how Hyoho achieves what others perceive as speed, right? The way we do work that appears fast is because we really understand a, a key principle in the reality of speed, which is that time and distance are basically the same thing. Now, what that means I can demonstrate pretty easy. If my opponent's right in front of me and I'm in Chudon and I want to cut him, right? If I cut as so, that's one speed. It's traveled a certain amount of distance, right? Now, if I want to make that same cut from up here, we would say, oh, that second cut is faster, right? but it's actually moving at the same velocity, right? It's moving at the same speed. The difference between the two cuts is distance, right? If I'm traveling almost twice the distance, I am twice as slow, right? It's pretty simple. If I'm traveling half the distance, I'm basically twice as fast, even though my actual physical speed has not changed. This idea that speed and distance, time, till your sword impacts the opponent and distance are the same thing is so uh, critical in understanding how to uh, leverage efficiency against another person's speed, against what we perceive as their speed, right? This is why in Yoho, what's our first kata, right? Sasen, the pointing finger, boop, is a straight line. It is 
that most direct path between two points. What happens in Hasso? Right? Oh, same thing. Direct. In the Ukadagashikaras. Ba. Same thing. Everything goes forward. Ba. Everything drives into the person. Now, it's not until we get to Mojirigamai that we start to see uh, deviations from this. But by that time, we should have already established with the first five kata our, our primary mode of work. If we want to bring injury to the person, we work directly to them in as short a path as possible. Now, this whole idea of distance being the same thing as time is not unique to Hyoho by, by any means. It is, it is commonly held in many Koryu. Um, so much so that you'll see them changing their Kamai to kind of leverage this. You'll see positions where the sword is even further, right? If this cut two is twice as fast as the first one, then if I have that distance, then I'm four times faster. Theory, right? Now, to some degree, this is good, right? It's, it's being able to go, oh, this is the way the world works and leverage that knowledge uh, to your victory is the whole point of strategy, right? It's to take an idea and turn that idea into a tool you can use to defeat your opponent. So, in Yo, when we're working in Kata, one of the main things that we are working on is efficiency. How can we drive our tool into the other guy directly? How can we accomplish more than one goal while doing so, right? So, when I cut, if that cut also displaces the opponent away, if it also sets my body outside of where there is danger, if it also drives me into a position where I can break down his kamai, break down his structure, all of this gives me benefit, right? And I've taken what? would have been a perfectly even cut in which we both kill each other, and I've taken that motion and turned it into something that just piles on advantage for me and puts the opponent in a rough, rough place where they have to then start pulling out their sneaky ninja tricks to work free of, right? And that's... The kata can appear very simple, and they are. And that's the problem, right? Is that Sasen is so simple, anyone could do it. But it's, it's something that you'll spend your entire life trying to master. So take your time and, uh, and work with them, right? It's worth it. It's worth it. So, we've talked about speed, how people perceive it, um, kind of the pitfalls of chasing after it. We've talked about uh, how speed relates to distance and time, and how in Yoho we use efficiency to create the, um, the misperception that we are moving fast when the actual velocity of our swings is not uh, necessarily greater than our opponents. Let's take some time and talk about uh, Kyoho's philosophy about speed, right? Uh, to put it simply, uh, and again, Musashi is real clear on this, if you look like, if you're swinging on a dude and you are swinging physically 
faster than him, you're probably out of time, right? Because going faster than him is unnecessary. It's a waste, right? You can beat him by moving at the same time. Why would you expend a bunch of energy to go faster? Especially when you have to consider your overall endurance. Because again, this is not, you know, a, a five minute or three minute round against one guy. This is your day. This might be several days, maybe a week, maybe you're on campaign for a month, and sure, you're not fighting every day, but you have to consider your endurance. And if I am constantly just, just driving everything I can into every strike, I'm gonna wear down. Uh, just my joints alone will begin to break down, my endurance breaks down, and suddenly I'm not able to beat someone that I otherwise would be able to. So, uh, in our view, it's much better to uh, be in harmony with the person in terms of how uh, physically fast your tools are moving. There are exceptions, right? There are times when a little bit of speed can help you. In the same way that there are times when a little bit of uh, slowness, a little bit of, of pulling back, of controlling it and waiting just a split instant can help you. Um, this is uh, one of those things that's really hard to demonstrate um, without being in person to put your hands on a dude. But uh, we'll talk about the concepts and hopefully you can replicate them with your own training partners. So in Yoho, we have this idea of hitting somebody uh, in the half beat, right? We have our three initiatives, Kendo Sen, Taino Sen, Tai Taino Sen, right? We're, we're, we're hitting them first, we're hitting them at the same time, or we're hitting them directly after, right? These times are not just when we hit them, but they're generalized ideas of when hits can occur. Now, when we hit somebody in the half beat, we are, uh, let's look at it this way. If we have our three initiatives, we can think of that as a unit of time. Here's the unit of time. Before the action begins, during the action, and immediately after. Stacked next to that is another unit of time with those same three, before, during, and after. There is a space, a kind of dwell period uh, between actions that is outside of the kind of normal rhythm that humans move with. Um, if you've sparred with somebody, if you've trained against somebody, in any kind of uh, competitive violence like this, you'll have experienced rhythm, right? You, you get into that one, two, one, two, one, two with your opponent where uh, you're basically attacking almost into the defensive time of their work. And you create this kind of uh, mutual interplay, a, a prolonging of the encounter. Um, uh, this can make you feel like you're not going fast enough, like your opponent's going faster, when in actuality you're just uh, not in good time. You're, you're not working in good time. You're working in great relation, uh, but you need to adjust. Um, hitting somebody in the in-between space in the halftime uh, takes quite a deal of mental effort because you have to first be aware of your rhythm. You, you have to be really conscious of the rhythm that you and your opponent are fighting with. And the tempo to that rhythm is going to change. It, it, it's, you're going to have times where it's fast and times where it's slow. And it's going to change between the people that you work with, too. So you have to first kind of discern the tempo that you're working at. And just give, 
just just the smallest, barest half an instant before you work. This can be studied uh, really well in the Haso katas, Haso Hirari and Haso Migi. In that, uh, ba, 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 they swing, we step, and there's just a brief pause. Then their work begins to dissolve in preparation for their next piece of work, and we catch them in that dissolution phase. Um, now, in the application of the kata, we do it in one instant, but the the safe form, the pause step version of the kata still is teaching us something. It's still helping us to uh, maybe not at a beginner level, but as we get better and we, we start really sort of driving some stress into ourselves and some psychological pressure on ourselves and our opponent as we're working with this, it gives us the capacity to wait, right? And uh, waiting when we feel we have an opening, waiting when we're feeling uh, terror and excitement uh, from having just evaded somebody trying to hurt us, is, uh, it's, it's hard to acquire and it's hard to develop. But if you can, which you, anybody can, it's not, it's not special, it's just not... Um, Instinctive. It is. It is not something that uh, comes naturally to people. It has to be developed. If you can develop this skill, uh, you can. You can just really throw a monkey wrench into your opponent, right? You can take their time. You can take the initiative. Pretty much at any point during the fight, once you have this skill, whether or not you can keep it is based on your, you know, kamai. Right? Your your good footwork and stuff but uh, once you get the sense for it it's pretty easy to do now what about times where we want to cut slow why would we want to cut slow right if we can cut fast and get to the opponent more is the better for us right we, we can outspeed his defense can't come to us and we can come straight in there are lots of opportunities where it is more advantageous to gather an opponent up as you're cutting them down than to just hack off a limb, right? So, uh, vague example, right? Person's coming in, they're just coming to swack me. I'm going to do that same Kiryotoshi from Haso, right? I cut in, I cut down but I create this feeling of expansion in myself. Just whoop, whoop, right? And I cut much, much slower than, than I normally would, right? Just whoop. And what I'm doing is using my blade to, uh, I'm using it like a net and I'm literally engulfing the opponent with it, I'm grappling him with my sword. I'm bringing all of his assets kind of under my sway in one motion. Uh, either, usually when I do it, it's because I'm trying to drive them somewhere, right? I want to I wanna push them into an obstacle. I want to push them over the hill. I, I want to push them over a berm. Uh, maybe I just want to set them off boop, and break their posture so that I can follow in with something uh, uh, simple and direct, right? Maybe another example for this use is the person's being super defensive, right? They're trying to smack your sword away all the time, trying to parry, trying to get that sort of, oh, I got you kind of work. You can just gather them up, gather them, their defense, the whole kit and caboodle, you wrap them in a sack and you throw them in the river. Right? Uh, this skill, being able to cut slowly, uh, 
and have it be meaningful is not very hard to develop. Uh, and I think that once you guys try it, you'll really start to see like, well, wow, this is pretty cool. <laughs> you'll find lots of uh, interesting places to use it. Um, so to kind of recap this section in Yoho, our strategy is to move at the same relative velocity to only move as fast as we need to. And when we need to go faster, we don't do it by pushing the sword. We're not push the sword, push the sword faster. Instead, we uh, let go of our constraint, right? It was, uh, uh, right? My arm is soft, right? Not noodly, just not overly tense, right? The precision of the motion comes from the strength of the tendons and the strength of the ligaments to support the joint, right? The muscle is uh, very minimally involved, right? Uh, needless to say, this is quite different from how uh, most contemporary people fight or work with a sword, especially outside of Kodiu. Um, Again, in Koryu, this idea is uh, its not unique, right? And really, among uh, good fighting lineages that, like, actually at some point in their history fought and murdered dudes, this is not unique, right? Because it's, it's, it's not a lofty idea. It, it, it's, it's a pragmatic approach to being able to continue all day long, right? Um, so you see it all over the place, right? Um, I don't know. It's everything I can think of for right now. I'm sure I'm missing a ton of stuff. Main point. If you're trying to go fast, you're probably missing the point, right? If you feel that you are just substantially slower than the opponent, there's a good chance that you're not comfortable with your tool. Um, or, this is a good point, you're uh, misperceiving the situation, right? Remember, we've got two kinds of perception, according to Musashi and uh, modern optic science, right? We have uh, discerning sight, right? The sight that goes, oh, I'm looking at that newspaper, I'm identifying those letters and I'm reading it. And we have perceiving sight. Oh, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. Oh, I picked up something when it's dark out, right? When we uh, use our, uh, our precise sight and focus it on our opponent, whether it's on their tools, whether it's on their body, whether it's on their little toesies, whether it's on their big, scary, mean mug, right? We are increasing the speed at which we see their motions. We're building up our own stress. We're, we're really just making it very, very hard for ourselves to match and work comfortably with them. In contrast, when we use our perceiving sight, when we use that Enzan no Metsuke, eyes of the distant mountain, then we're able to uh, perceive what's there, what's really there, not what's there so much colored by our emotions, by our fear, by our terror, by our desire, our want, our energy, right? <clears throat> right? We can just see it for what it is. And we realize that for the most part, uh, swords are slow. I mean, they're not super fast, right? And the times that they seem the fastest to us are often the times that we're they're moving the slowest, right? We see that wave of motion and we, we pick that up as speed. And so we, uh, it just, it just really harks us up. Whereas simple motions often appear slow and we can dodge them easy, even though they're moving at a higher velocity. So perception's kind of the other 
way you can niggle into this whole speed problem if you're having it. So, main takeaways. In Sun Lambetsuke, big, wide vision. Use efficient movement. Train until you're comfortable moving your sword so that you can move it at your will without having to push it and drive it. And uh, don't chase speed. Chase harmony, right? Move with your opponent. And as always, pick up a sword and go train.